G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel here. If it's your first time here, give us a thumbs up, uh, share and subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell when you do subscribe. That way you will get a ping in your phone now and when I put something on my channel. Now I'll quickly get the size up there on the canvas and also some colors going up the screen. See them going up there like that? Magic, isn't it? All right, now I've got a reference picture here and the whole purpose of this project is to show you how to get a reference picture into your painting, okay? And I'm gonna show you the picture and explain a few things and then go to the actual canvas and do the marking out. So I'm not going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, because you wanna know where your horizon line is, where shrubs are, rocks, other different things on the layout, okay? So that's what I wanna teach you in this tutorial today so come on over here and let's get right in it and I'll show you the picture now we're gonna put this roughly all this water land sand rock whatever in that area on our canvas so you want to work out your horizon line so I'm going to do all this on the canvas and show you so I'm going to look out for this horizon line where this um, shrub and land mass are roughly where this is coming down and roughly the shadow all these little aspects you want to go on to working out where they need to go on your canvas so I'm going to spend a bit of time now just you, you seen what's on the picture the horizon line is about just over halfway high so I'll go there so I'll get that sorted first just to get the horizon line in. So we're gonna pretty much, the first step here was we'll get everything marked in. I'm just using a graphite pencil. And now probably this far into the horizon line is where that land mass is coming out. And it's pretty much coming up to here and down to about here. So it's pretty much there like that. Now it's not a point either. It is sort of coming along and like that now about this far from the edge is where the water starts and then from the horizon line down here we've got the water coming about to here and then the shadow area is about there so that is about just something like that and then we're going to have this shadow area there as well the wet sanded area participating lower as you get out there because I've seen some people they do the lines all the same size now we do have some white frothy foam which is if anything about there <clears throat> the rock i don't know if i'll do the rock but that's a bit under the horizon line now this is where i use my artistic license and if that happens i feel well you know what that'll look better protruding above the horizon line okay so if you want to put that in uh, then we just have this foreground cacti tree here. I don't know if I'll do that or not. And we have some rockery pretty much there. Like not Well, that's where the trees are. So now we're ready to start mapping it in. Now this is the way a proper artist, well most general artists, would do an actual painting, okay? So I've got my French Ultramarine and Permanent Linzerin. I want to mix up a purpley value of that so this is instead of doing it the way I normally do it I'm just going to show you this way now a good Australian artist he teaches people this himself actually he calls it the Moore method Rod Moore check him out he's got a YouTube channel he's a wonderful Australian artist and he, he's created his own Moore method where how it shows you how to block things in and stuff like that anyway now i want to grab a little bit more french blue because i don't feel there's enough there and we're just going to use this now and a small brush let's say this one here just something you can sketch in with okay to get things right so we pretty much got our trees up here and this is coming now I don't want to do a straight line if anything if the line's going to be crooked that's fine but every, every crookedness has a straight bit like that okay coming down a straight bit like that boom 
There we go. And you could probably work out, well, I'll have the limestone and all the trees coming here the way it was roughly within the reference picture. And now the water's coming along here all the way. And our horizon line is about there. So we've got that mapped in roughly, even if you want to do the wet sanded bit. There we go. We've got that mapped in. Now we can start doing things from the back to the front. Now we're, I'm going to do the sky first and then I'll start, I'll put the water in so this can sit on top of the water. Now I want to map in my sky with just craft paint first and retarder so as I can get some horizon polluted colours on the horizon line because this is going to be kind of a real looking painting. Okay, from that reference picture, and it's a perfect subject, beachscape, seascape. All right, so I'll get this white primed in to the sky area. Just go to where we've mapped it in with our mixture there. This can be all dry, That what you've done on, because it's acrylic paint. So that let that dry. Now you can do that or use a pencil. Now I want to just stroke this nice and there we go. I'm getting a bit of that purple in there. I'm going to wipe that brush and just pick up some cerulean blue because I love cerulean blue for me sky. I'll get this up into the sky area. Starting from the top, push it on there and now I want to bring it down, bring it down to the horizon line, get it all on there. And if anything, I want the horizon line a little bit lighter than the top. Now I'll stroke that nice and flat, nice and flat, like so. Now grabbing a little bit of this into our blue, that mixture that we had there, just a little bit of that, a bit more, just so we get that polluted horizon line going there all right that's all i'm wanting something subtle and we're not going to follow it up there we're going to put it straight into the painting straight down so straight here straight across and i'm going to start bringing it up into the sky like so using the tip of my putter on a brush now and i'm going to get rid of any hard line there we go Now we're ready for some effective clouds. Now I want to do some clouds. I want to have uh, a little bit of this lightened up. That's too much. So I'll use about that much there. There we go. I want about this value here. That's light. Now I want to mix up. I'll grab some of this paint over here and I want to mix that up. This is Good titanium white now with some of that in there. Now I'm just going to get a lot of little clouds and these ones are stratocumulus clouds. They're those lots of dotty ones. So we'll get a few in the horizon line first. So I'll put them there, a couple. Just, you know, there's quite a lot in the picture but I'll just put what I feel I can do in my painting because it's my painting. Stratocumulus clouds these are. You would have seen these type in the skies before. Grab yourself a blending brush and softly sink these into the sky there. I'm gonna wipe that brush. It's picking up a lot as I blend. Get this one out there somewhere. I'm just sinking them down because I will be putting some white with these. Now you've got to practice clouds because clouds can be very annoyingly hard to do when you're first learning to paint. I want to try and get the bases of them a little bit level because those ones seem to have been going like that. But I've just softened them into the sky like so. Then I'll put some more on now. Uh, not too much. Maybe I'll do my own. I'm not going to follow the picture. One there and something into the sky here, so I'm stamping it on. 
stamping it on and maybe something up into the blue here right. now this one I want to keep the top and blend stretch it out stretch it out and pull it down into that polluted atmosphere tickle the tops a little bit stretch it out and you'll feel the marvelous cloud coming to life on your canvas there same with this one something there pull him because we've got to put white into these yet yeah, this is just the weathery bits of the clouds it's very softly blending on there i am oh we've got some scratch marks i'll just dab them back out here we go now remember that white i cut it in half and added that to it i'm going to grab just the white now i've cleaned my fan brush that's the one i like to stamp it on and we're just going to add the yumminess to those clouds we've put up there now so like here we want some of this white to mix with that purple so i'm going at the top of it and dancing it into that purple coming a bit above it just so i've got something to blend down into that lighter purple color there i've got a smaller blending brush and watch what i do i'm just gonna so you can see all those peaky little brush strokes i want to get rid of those because i don't like that i like it to look like it's airbrushed i like it to look real i like it to look like it's full of bullshit so i'm touching that soft as buggery now see where that white is meeting the purpley color i'm wiping that i'm going to smear those two together now very gingerly and gently and it's like we've got that stormy color within our cloud we can put a bit of something like that onto it it doesn't matter now you can see how that makes it look like a bit of a real cloud same on here we'll do the same again everything's wet on the canvas above it and just a little bit in there okay wiping your blending brush constantly tickle the tops getting rid of those ugly peaky bits there just dancing it around look at that tickle the tops of the very corner of the brush very lightly touching it I am now some people say clouds are the death of them but I'm the death of clouds because clouds cannot get past me no more I've finally conquered them and I want to show you that you can as well I just don't like these one two three see those sort of things so I'm going to try and I don't want to press too hard I'll go down to the white but I'm just trying to get rid of that using my Arctic license see and now I'll just gingerly do those ones okay we'll just put a little bit of white there maybe there now I've got my my rag ready to keep wiping what I'm blending because you can't do this without wiping you really need to wipe so I'll get this and if I've done too much white I just pick up that gray and I'll put that back but we're just distorting that with some white colors there we go I've got a smaller blending brush there so I'm going to use it because these clouds are getting a little bit tinsy wincy eedy beady tiny ones so I'll just dance in there like that I love giving them a little paw a little tail or something wiping it now they don't have to be too much yumminess on these because these are pretty much all the um, horizon clouds these are stratocumulus clouds these ones they sit in little, little lumps <coughs> and those gap fillers that you see me put in they're just simple high cirrus clouds now we will do for the art's sake something here not all of it just like the top of it breaking into that that's it still got all this gray body there you want to keep that I want to like bring this into that giving it dimension and bullshit so it looks like it's coming at you it doesn't look like a flat curtain on the side of, on the backdrop of your painting it's got dimension within it tickle in the tops I want to get rid of some of this harshness here and if anything I love pulling them like that as well because it, it creates movement within your cloud there we go that is a bit one two three ish I don't like it I'm gonna get my finger and kind of 
disturb that situation that's happening there and get rid of my finger marks. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now the sky's done, everything's laying with the horizon, okay? You sort of don't want things moving like this, it can look a bit crooked. I'm gonna dry this edge bit here now, just so as I can start putting the next pieces onto this painting. Now I'm grabbing the craft white again, just to block in the bottom half of the painting, so as I can get some merging colors as well within the water. So all here is going to be beach sand, and that'll be the water. Oh wow, so pretty much to there. See how this is dry and wanting on the canvas. Once I put the actual paint that I'm painting on top of this, it's not gonna be dry and wanting. So I'll get that roughly to me horizon line somewhere there like so. Get all that mapped in there. Let's get all that up there, something like that reasonable. It doesn't have to be sharp, but what's it like in the picture there it is quite sharp in the picture but there we go it's important that bottom cloud isn't covered up by too much of the water i want that purple line gone there i'll fix that up with the actual watercolor paint now i've got some there we go nice and quick i have i'll just wipe that brush some turquoise here Phalo turquoise and we'll just get this mapped in first and then we'll make it lighter and darker where we need it according to the reference picture so the water's pretty much all the way here so we'll come from here so of course we mapped it in we know roughly where to put our water all the way out there beautiful now we'll just get this at least one value for now get it all the way down there now stroke it with the tip of your putter on a brush if you've got to put her on a brush or just get it so if you're going to have any lines they'll be left and right within the painting not up and down and all over the place there we go you can even mask up the um, horizon line if you want i'm not going to now we want some darker values of that ocean look at that looks beautiful already i've got some of the french ultramarine down there again and i'm going to add some of that Hopefully that's the right value that I'm going to be looking for. I was going to use a cerulean, but I'll see what this one's going to look like. Because out in the horizon, in the pick, out here's the darker value of the ocean, pretty much all out there. So I'm using the putter on a brush on its edge just to get this darker out here, darker band of water out here, and it's sort of. Oh, we can, like I normally stamp it on, so we'll stamp that on like so. Get some more on there, Ian. Stamp it on, there we go. With the side of the brush. That way you can put the elements where you want them. Nice and dark, a little bit here, not too much. And against there. Then I'll just wipe that, all the big gluggy bits off it. And we'll stroke that like a gentleman. brush does so many things it's unbelievable I'll come back this way just to get rid of that bit there and then down here that's it that's done your water is done if I can stop stroking it now for me beach sand I just simply use yellow oxide I will grab because it's a bit bright I'll put some more of that hard night white. I like just using a simple, you can go to science fill and really change the color up for your sand, but I just pretty much want yellow oxide with some white, tinted with white, just for me simple beach sand. And I wanna crisscross this into that white that I put on first. Uh, where are we? It's about to there, and it's gonna come I don't want to bring blue into this here. Okay, so that's a lot more. Just let me add more. It's a lot more over the blue. I've got to be careful not to get there. We're making things flat, then they can come towards us. There we go.
kissed up against the blue. I'll wipe that off there. My goodness, what a lot of paint I'm putting on me. Easel, I don't want to do that all the time. See what happened? I've got some blue there. Good mistake. I can fix it up so you don't do that. That's because I went into the blue and came back. See, I just did it again. <laughs> I'm going to add more white to this anyway because it's still too yellow. Just really put more white with that now. So if we can get this a lot lighter because it's just too dark. What I'm going to do is come up in a hard line there because we don't need it blending out. Now we're pretty much groveling there and it's all the way up there there we go now I have given this a light dry I want to grab the color to just get the wet sand there so I've just got the gray into that and let's hope that can make up for some wet sand color there i've just got a flat brush here yeah that's all right now it does have a little bit i'm just going to grab some i can just see a tinge of this going in there within the reference picture so not too much of that because it's very powerful so i've added some gray mid-tone gray mix yourself up some if you don't have any into that sand color and a teensy bit of permanent linserin now don't worry about here because we're going to make that up with froth but we want the um, actual wet sand coming um it's kind of so it'll start from about here dribble out come back you want the edges nice and sharp i'll just get a bit of water into that paint so it's going to transfer better and we're pretty much going to keep it straight but come out like this and back to the water so they're nice and sharp We'll, block, we'll dry that and add more to it so that it's thicker. And we're pretty much going to come down here. More water. Water. We're not wet enough. And pretty much. There we go. Now we can just block that in. But make sure they're nice and sharp like they are in the reference because it makes sense when they're sharp so I'm just going to put this coat on it's a little bit um, antsy pantsy see through -y, but that's all right because once I dry it we'll be able to double up the coat okay because a lot of it's still a bit rubbery wet so we'll get this roughly there I mean usually I'll have more time to paint this than what I do So I'll give that a dry and then we'll darken it up a bit more. Okay, I've dried it. I've given this like a second coat and roughly where that land, where it was hitting the water, we're going to need some of this just there to create value and charisma within our water. So I'll just sort of, I can grab the turquoise to sink that back as well if it's too much and over here I could see where the water's hitting the sand there there's a little bit of mumble jumble and these need to come straight out into the water as well so when we start our sharp detailing from here this will just look like all background stuff and just here we've got the water's going to be here but we need some of this darker bit within the water as well flapping up the frothy foam Okay, so that'll be about there, lessening here, just getting rid of that hard line. Okay, and probably a mingy bit over here if you want. That'll do, that'll do it. Now, like I said, I'm just grabbing this uh, watercolour. We'll start from out here somewhere and we'll just sort of trace that back where we feel it needs it. And this colour here, it seems to be darker than what the water is. 
what I might do is take advantage of that and um, look at the reference and sort of go, yeah, there's a bit of a dark band here. I could probably scrumble in, but keep it in cahoots with the horizon line and just sort of scrumble it down like that. Don't have them arching or anything if you can, and don't have this too watery either because it'll ruin you. Right. Now, on the top of that where it's all dark, I mean, where it, I want to make it dark, I mean, on the top of this grey, you'll see why. When we add the um, water, it's just going to create the loveliness of it all. Uh, probably got a darker band out here somewhere coming off the actual painting. It's not very straight, is it, Ian? And now I've got a little bit of black and I just mingigated it into there, mixed it into there, that grey that we did the shadow with, because I'm grabbing a liner brush, right? Just twisting the edge, the paint to the edge of the brush. And you cannot, whether you want to do this or not, I'm just looking at the reference and I can see the slightest, so I might just put the slightest bit of... Um, very sharp, but a bit more shadowy color here. Uh, and I'm not gonna do it around the whole edge and make it look cartoony. I wanna try and get at least just certain angled edges of it done. Now that shadow paint's a bit wet, so I can just scrumble that back into the shadow there a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit too much. So what I will do, if I make a mistake, I just got to fix it in front of you. That's all there is to it. I'm just going to go and grab the other color, this color, and come back now and think, well, all right, that was a bit too much. It'll still be there, but subtle. And the subtleness you can get that there, it's just going to make your shadow, or not your shadow, your wet sand bit, just look more, oh, wow, I like that. All on the underside bits. Like that. Now if I can find a way through me mess here. <laughs> I've got me little scrumbling brush. <laughs> and I've got good titanium white. Now this might get dirty from the water, which is fine. I kind of want it to do that. I haven't got too much on there. And see this stuff here? I'm going to try and get that happening and I like, I'm going to have a big glare there in my painting. So that's why I left this now. See where this is touching the blue? That's where it's meeting. They're going to have a meeting and talk about froth and foam. So the bottom side, you want it hard and sharp. Okay. To there. And then we want to scrumble it into the water. Now I do want to put a little bit of the sand colour in that because that's a little bit too white and I can always yummy it up with the pure white later because this is um, pure white sandy colour, let's say. And those bits of grey and dark blue, they're kind of dry but I will go back and scramble some of them in as well. And you have it, get rid of those surprises on there so you don't get stuff like that there. And it's just pretty much not too far out. And this is really scrumbling, crashing down there and crashing there, crashing there, and it's participating away to here somewhere, okay? Now I want to just have a look at that. That's kind of all right. See that dark blue? You need that there. Well, I have lost a lot of it, so we will put it back. And it's just kind of carrying on from there very small and then a bit bigger to it where it meets that all right now this brush is still a bit dirty i'll pick up some of the um the gray color and try and ubulate that back in there like so and then when i use the actual white over that dirty sand color white it'll give it charisma and yumminess and all those sort of values. Now I'm just wiping that again on my easel and picking up that dark watercolour 
and try and scramble that back into there as well. So we've got just on the outer edge here. Yeah, there we go. Sit some of that down. So we're putting it back, backwards and forwards with your lights and darks until you're happy with it. It doesn't have to be done in the first pass. And if it didn't work, you don't have to screw it up and think, well, that didn't work. You've got to keep playing with art and working with it and challenging yourself with it. Now we'll put just the um, the frothing white. I've got pure titanium white and I want to just gingerly and gently find the pure bits within the picture where it's going to make sense in the painting. So there's some here, real pure. And crack up some of this a bit more brighter. Yeah, it's looking good. I'm happy with that. Just scoot some of it back there a little bit, not too much. Now I'm going to grab that liner brush that I had with the white, because up in the top there, see over here, sorry, over here, get some of that white, because we do need some of that just gingerly playing around over there as well. Um, not too much, just like the litmus bits like this, which is in the painting something like that and something like that now this is too stark you can dirty it down with the sand color yeah, and you can see what that's doing um, now here to sharpen all this up where we lost it with that big brush we can come with this and just slowly do something like this pulling it back so it's got a type of a layer there and some loveliness to it how's that looking yeah you can see what that's done so we'll do the same here take advantage of that dark and just tear the top back looks a bit mumble jumble but when you finally look at all the colors together that makes sense and down here we've got the bright there all right now just grabbing some of the yellow oxide on its own that white we want to just well not that fat we want to gingerly just put a bit of a very tender but small there we go um shadow line there okay leave a bit out and come back here very sharp very gingerly just to give it some kind of that white sitting on the wet sand some kind of shadow there we go now i grabbed some of the oh hang on a minute let's start again so you can see it's a bloody tutorial i don't want to be cutting corners i've got the gray and the french ultramarine just a little bit of that to get a silvery bluey reflectionist color in the really wet part of the sand and like what i can see in the um, reference pick i just want to put some bands of really wetter wet sand out here coming across like so okay uh, let's see if we can do this just And if you've overdone it with this color, just grab that gray back again and um, rub out some of this with the gray. This here somewhere looks a bit. And just sink that back gingerly. I've just got some pure titanium white. Uh, good quality titanium white on that same little brush um, because I want to get can't see it in the picture anymore but I want to get like some kind of here I'll do it here a real bright spot where are you where are we about there a real bright spot I hope I don't ruin it take most of that off the brush and get like a glare coming down there glare coming up here now is this going to ruin the painting or what
I like that. I think I'll make the top a bit more sparkly. That way um, the shadow will be its own self and the top bit's its own self. We just got to get this a little bit longer down into the wetness there. There we go. I'm grabbing more white and the yellow ochre again, a lot more white though, just so I can get some really brighter values within our sand there because it's a bit too much one tone. And probably starting from here, go there. Like that. So this is another damper, drier, wetter area of the sand or dry out here. Pull this back. Where's the tape? Oh, it's all the way there. Now grabbing this yellow oxide colour again, we're going to map in that headland on the left hand side of the painting. I'll start from the bottom here. So we've got, it's coming getting into that grey there a bit. Just like so. Where are we? Out there. And then there's that line there. This is the, the rocks. So we'll get that all jingle jangled out there like so. And give it a dry so it's nice and dry. Now grabbing this colour we had in the beginning, let's grab this and block in the top half of that piece of stuff out here. So we, we'll pretty much get the, the trees with the air in between it, all the way there down. Nicely get air in between a lot of it. Till you cover the blue up, I mean the white up. This isn't going to be this colour of course, this is just a blocking colour. And also it's going to create the shadow for the stuff within there as well. Now I've dried the um, that brownie colour, edge it over it so it's acting like this is already your foliage leaning over it. I'll show you what I mean. But it's just getting over the limestone there, alright? Just grabbing some of the grey into that white sand colour. I'd better get a bit more, it's not enough. Okay, some of the grey colour there. And maybe some of that over here. So we've got the grey colour and this colour, okay? Because we need bits more of this. Just kind of looking a bit more better than what it is. A little bit more. Limestone. Scramble it and scratch it through there. There you go, yeah. Now just wa wash and wipe the brush and grab the grey colour that you mix now, which is the lighter colour of that. And um, we'll just gradually put some nice grey bits within there, hopefully. Now where this land is meeting the water, we want to get um, a bit of darker value there as well. I've just got some burn number, and I'm going to gingerly, oh it's not dark enough, and I want to just sort of come from there, get some darker bits in there, and we'll set them back with highlights. Just where that's meeting the water. Transit back a bit into the actual. That'll do. Once we put the bushes in, it'll look great. Now, I've got um, forest green here. I want to go on top of that purple, but leave the purple there and start 
tracing in, stamping in my foliage. And leaving some of the darks in there, okay. And where it's coming onto the limestone, you want to try and dribble little bits in just here and there if you can. So it looks like nature came and done its thing. There we go, and we can just finish doing all this up here. Now you might be thinking, Ian, I can't see that green you're putting on there. What the hell do you got to put that on there for? Well, I'm glad you asked because if you watch the whole video and you get to this bit, you'll realise why this bit's happening. We can leave dark pockets in there because we will be just highlighting just this a bit and that bit down there will be a different value because it's further away and we'll make that happen. But this is allowing all the darks to still show. Got a bit of burnt umber and cad yellow light there just to mix up the dead wood colour because we all know you need that. And we'll kind of see where we want some of this. So I haven't dried it, so I might have to. We'll see how we go. We'll sink that back. Just about, where are we? There. There, I just put that. <laughs> colour out there to add distance. Now grabbing some of your um, forest green and yellow and what do you reckon we need more yellow? There we go and we'll just lightly highlight some of that headland out there now whatever you might want to call it. So look at it and I'll probably bring this all the way in front of there, coming down, leaving massive pockets of dark, get some of it coming over your rocks there, get rid of those blobs by dragging them, that's okay. I'm happy with that. Now just here where I said I'll come back to that, we need the actual white sand colour because we've got to put that bang right in front of it. Don't try and make all that the one. This is a way before it gets to there, okay? We'll get rid of some of that uh, blue as well there. And we're going to just bring this on its own hill. So it sits that back. And there we go there. We can brush this in accordingly. Bring it down here. Bring some of it in there. See how it's set that back? I'm just grabbing some of this darker grey here in it. Because I'm looking, it's not in the reference, but see here, this sort of goes bleh and stops. I'd probably like to get some more. Let's say there's another deeper puddle there somewhere, maybe something of this. I don't know. Just some other facets. How's that looking? And we can just sit them down as well with this. Back to this colour again, get it a little bit wet. We just need a little bit of darkness in the left hand bottom corner there. So as we can add our foreground, pick a boo, how you doing tree? So I've dried everything, where's my tape? Tapes there. So we'll just get some of this, that's very watery, I don't want it that watery. And probably in the shape of those leaves, probably participating out there, but not so. Okay, uh, up here, up here, up here, up there, like that. Just like 
that. Uh, and we'll get one around like that, maybe. <laughs> and something just, where's the bottom? Where's my tape? There it is. Prancing around the bottom like that. That'll do it. Now grabbing our forest green, I've dried this. Let's leave some of the dark there, but try and put some um, petals. Big cacti, uh, leafy type of um, what do you call it? These things you get on the beach. I don't know what they're called actually, but uh, after we put this colour in, we will um, sink in a few trunks, and then we'll just simply highlight it. Okay, but this is all just breaking up. Just there. This is in the foreground, but it's kind of blurry because the focus is back out there. Okay. Now we'll just get the um, the liner brush. Where is it? And some burnt umber. And if it's not dark enough, we will put some white in it. So we'll get some of this up there like that. I might put the slightest white, slightest whitest in there just so we can see. And we've got something coming from here. Boom into there. And there, and there. Where else is there some? I mean, we can just make up stuff. But we'll put this one back the right colour. Get some up there. It's not a pandanus. We, I, I, there are pandanus in the um, eastern states. This is a bit of a blurry one just coming out there like that. Just some scraggly up there like that. Do. Now I've got that green and yellow mixed together here again. And we want to bring um, these leaves just coo weave each other crisscrossing and all sorts of stuff like that and then when we dry this we can give these a bit of a, um, a highlight as well this is just artsy down there of your um, whatever it is your cacti sort of branch that a bush that it is you know and I've given it a light dry now I'm adding more yellow into that mix cad yellow light actually you want it doesn't have to be fully mixed and now let's grab the top let's say this one grab the top pull it into it go that way pull it into it pull this one in front of that one there like that so what you're doing is you're creating, you here, bang, you're creating the bits and pieces in front of everything. And it's just real, uh, what would you call it? Oh, let's go this way. It's just arty looking. It's not like realistic here. It's, it's out of focus, but at the front. There we go. And we can always add darks into it if we need be. We'll go there. And we'll go there, there, there. Now I did dry it, but not a, not enough. I mean, not a lot. I wanted it kind of rubbery, so it kind of drags within everything here. On the side there, down there. Just backwards and forwards, play with it till you're getting that. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. Bang! Look at that big structure paint there, and that blob right there. Getting some yellow ochre with some yellow. So we're yellowing it a lot more, so it's sort of caramelly looking. There we go. 
go, mainly on the yellow side, yes. And we want to get just some, the dead sort of leaves sticking out, but they've got to be sitting within the dark areas, otherwise they won't stick out. See like that? Uh, where are we? Just something here and there. Now I'll just put my signature on here and then we'll whack a frame on it. And be sure to check out the links in the description below. Uh, message me on Facebook if you want to purchase this painting or any other painting of mine. And my blending brushes are also available. Message me about those. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. They're much appreciated to you people. You're a real big help to my channel. All right, we'll whack a frame on there. Look at that, yeah. It's not too shabby. I'm not sure about this glare, but it is what it is. We've got distance, we've got a realistic sky, we've got some headlands out there, and we've got all this beachfront here with some, I don't know what that green is, I must have forgot to rub it out. But anyway, uh, and we've got this foreground just pick a in the middle there, and that's something I know you can do it. All right, thanks for sticking around. I had a lot of fun doing that, and I hope you learnt something following this tutorial as well. And like I said, Check out the links in the description below. There's about half a dozen there. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, okay? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.